Okay, my, my casing is now dry. It's been in the sun for a couple of hours. Nice and hard, nice and rigid. And I'm gonna fill it now. Most six inch Maltese shells are two color breaks. And they normally use on a six inch, three quarter inch comets for the, the outer ring. And on the inside they would have uh, quarter inch cut or round stars in, in, the, in the second colour. I don't have any small cut stars or round stars at the moment, so what I'm going to be using this is some uh, white strobe, they're about quarter inch. Now I can get 19 of these stars in this casing and I'm going to be putting six rows in. And I know for a fact, before I even get them in, that these are very lightly primed. They're red perchlorate, and they, they happen to light very easily. But because they're so lightly primed, they're going to be quite a, a loose fit in the casing. So what I'm going to do is, once I've got them in, and this is a, a standard method in Malta, is they're going to be wedged in with some wooden wedges. So there my 19th comet has gone in. I've got quite a big gap there. It's about an eighth of an inch, maybe a bit bigger. And then I've got some wooden wedges here and they've got a, a taper on one end so they're easy to, to slide in. So I'm gonna put a big one in there. That's about an eighth. And that pushes in with a bit of force. Now if you put your finger in and put it on top of one of the comets, see if you can wiggle it about. And I can't. It's, uh, it's tight enough with that one wedge that I can tip it upside down and it'll come out. But I can feel it's not super tight. So I'm going to get a, a much thinner wedge now, one of the 16th inch or, or thinner ones. And I'm going to place it on the opposite side. And if I can just get it started. If you can't get it opposite the, the, the first one, just choose a point where you can see there's a, a little bit of a gap at the top of the comets and then get it started in there. So that's started in. Tamped in, tamped them all down. And now it's, it's uh, really hard. They're not, gonna, they're not gonna drop out of there. <coughs> Your second row goes in, as with building any kind of cylinder shell, you should be arranging your comets like a, like a brick wall, i.e. not putting one on top of the other directly on top of one. The one sits on top of half of one and half of the other as you, <coughs> as you load the case. I should mention that, that most of the Maltese uh, clubs, they use chlorate stars and they're coated with a, a BP mix normally uh, with sulphur or without sulphur and in the past there have been serious accidents occurring when cases are being loaded like this and I suspect most of them are caused by forcing the last star in or putting wedges in and then hammering the wedge in or some kind of shock or friction has, has set the, the star off and uh, pretty disastrous consequences if that happens. So if I do any casings with chlorate stars. First of all, I always do it outside. And secondly, I would never be ramming like that. That would be a real no-no. And there, there are a few methods of getting the stars in the casing and nice and tight without having to, to ram them in. And when I do the video on making the 
three brake, the, the proper three brake multi shell with the bottom shot and the Maltese lift system. I'll be using Chlorate Stars for that and I'll show you, I'll be loading it outside of course, and I'll show you how uh, you can load the case with the minimum amount of danger. These being perchlorate stars, you can give them a fair amount of welly with the, the dowel and they shouldn't be igniting on you. Okay, that's a really tight one. I've got a, a third row, I've got a wedge in there, it's about an eighth. And it's, it needs knocking in. Again, put your, put your finger on one of them, give it, give it a wobble around, see if it moves. Okay, we've got three, three rows in there now. These are perchlorate red, they're a, they're a fairly fast burning composition and we've got a, a one inch spallet on this as, it, as it's only a single brake. On a, a three brake Maltese six inch, a proper one, none of the spallets would be over five eighths of an inch. So your first brake's going off as the shell's going up um, and the others go off in, in short order afterwards. And you can get away with doing that because they've got fast burning chlorate stars in. But if you start building shells with perchlorate stars, then unless you're sure they're not going to come down on the ground, um, you perhaps need to put smaller size comets in, maybe 5 8 in a 6 inch, just to make sure that they're, they're going to burn out in time. Okay, I'm on my fifth row. Okay, that's 19 and you can see there they're very loose there's a there's a big there's a big gap here of something like quarter inch so I put a wedge in it's got a taper on the end that one's a bit loose what I, what I want to try and do is to get <coughs> most of the slack up with the first wedge that one's a bit tighter Okay, that'll start, but I can't push it in my finger, so just tap it down. Tap it down with the dial. Just make sure everything is up against the case wall. Just tap the stars outwards against the case wall. Okay, and, and you can see I can move them about. They're, they're, not, they're not tight enough. So I want just perhaps a sixteenth of an inch, something like that. And I'll try and put it on the opposite side, but there, there isn't a nice gap in the top of that one, but there is on that one there. And if I can just get it started and I try and push the star apart as I do it, put your finger on it. Okay, and then just tap it down. A little bit sticks out like this, don't worry about it. These dowels are not cut 
exactly the right size. Now try and wiggle it again. Okay, that's tight. That's one, two, three, five rows. This is my last row now. Appears to be a bit shorter than the others for some reason. Okay, that's the 19th. Find a fat wedge. And you can see the size of the gap here, it's it's a good eighth of an inch. So that one looks like a good size for there. Okay, and just tap them. So they're up against the casing. As I said before, don't don't go doing this with chlorate stars, don't go whacking them and tamping them like this. Okay, we're still loose, so I want a, another one. I'll try and get it in the opposite side. Uh, there's a, a gap there. Too small, too big rather. If I can just get it started. Okay. Shoot to those two ends. Hope you can still see that. Okay, so I've got six rows in there, 19 per row, and now I want to fill the inside with uh, what would normally be cut stars, but I'm, I'm using uh, these strobe stars. The standard size canal for a, a Maltese shell is probably a little bit bigger than, than what you'd use on an Italian-American. Um, and if a six-inch Italian-American, you're probably going to want to use a, um, in the region of inch and three quarter to two inch. Uh, this is a two and a half inch former. I, I like to put a piece of this very thin tissue paper around my, my canal. I think it helps to keep the burst in the center. And if you're using chlorate stars, it also has the advantage of helping to keep the black powder burst separate from the uh, chlorate cut stars that you're putting in around it. And you can see there's not a lot of space in there once you've got the canal in, which is why they use such small stars, quarter inch normally. But uh, this gives a nice big burst. The little feet I cut here just help get the canal out afterwards without pulling the paper out. All the stars will sit on those little feet and enable me to pull the canal out without withdrawing the paper as well. So uh, here we go, put some strobe stars in. Gonna have quite a lot in here. And give it a, a slap, tamp it up and down. And then a good handful of polverone. The Maltese actually use a, a polverone which is, is quite large in size. It's uh, granulated to go through a, 
a three mesh and sit on a four. Uh, this is quite a bit bigger, this is uh, quite a bit smaller rather, this is mostly uh, 2FA size. And the Maltese Burst is, uh, from what I can gather generally, minus four plus eight. So it, there's, there's no fines in there, it's not uh, minus four plus 12 as uh, 2FA would be. Let's give these a tamp. Some more pulverone. Again, don't be doing this with chlorate. Don't be tamping on stuff and whacking things. You could quite well set the uh, contents of the shell off. Somewhere, some shell like that. Last couple of handfuls of strobe stars, a little bit more around there, okay I'm, I'm almost up to the top now and then I want to put my, my uh, burst in there in the bag in there. I just want to fill it to a, a point just above the level of the of the comets because as, as I withdraw this it'll some of the space that the uh, canal is taken up will be taken up by the BP. Just jiggle it around, lift it at the same time. Okay. And just tear this off. You could just fold it down over the top, but that center charger burst isn't going to go anywhere now. And I put a, another handful of pulverone on the top. Make sure there's nothing sitting on top of your, your last row of pumped uh, comets there. You want the end disc to sit down nicely. And I just build that up a little bit. It's the powder in the center is, is probably a, a quarter inch, three eighths of an inch higher than the, the level of the comets. And that's because when I put my end disc in now and give it a good wrap, it'll just solidify everything in there. So the end disc goes in. Don't be doing that with chlorate stars. Okay, that's seated on there nicely. Okay, now, now you'll see at the, the beginning of the video why I didn't paste that uh, half inch strip on the left hand side of the craft paper or the, uh, the cardboard because I want to be able to peel back these now. H had I pasted the whole lot then these would be stuck and I, I wouldn't be able to peel them back. 
and we want a bit of peel and back so we can get each layer over the end disc and, and the, uh, the second end disc that's going in in a minute. So just pull those back out of the way and again loads of glue down in between the two layers of chipboard as well okay and now fold them down More white glue on these tabs as well. You might be able to hear something in the background if you listen carefully. It's my wife doing her nightly meditation. Okay. And now the other end disc. Again, plenty of glue, both sides. It said the strength of the the casing on a Maltese shell and, and this particular way of um, putting the end discs on in two stages like this with the craft paper over and the, um, the cardboard over gives it immense strength at the end here and, and also we're going to put another disc on before we spike it so it's having three eighth inch thick end discs on there which is you know quite a lot of uh, paper and cardboard at the end uh, all glued down and it ensures that the the sh when the shell bursts that everything comes out the side and, and not out of the ends and that's what gives the multi shells their unique kind of elliptical pattern. Just break off any bits that are here with a, a dowel or shell beater or something. Okay that is it that's filled and it's now ready to spike.